When looking at history, the stories and anecdotes told by those who were there are as important as any document or official report. In wartime, they give a human face to the conflict. These stories can be light-hearted, comedic or heartwarming. Or they can be tragic, horrifying and dark. And oftentimes, a mixture of both the good and the bad. But how true are these stories? By piecing together unit histories, reports from the front and eyewitness accounts, we can create a best guess picture of what happened at what time and what place. And today, we take a look at a somewhat famous World War II armoured duel. The showdown at St. Veith between a German tank and an American armoured car. Welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voice article. I'm your host, Daniel, and today I'll be covering the Battle of St. Veith between an M8 Greyhound and a Tiger tank. If you like what we do and want to see more of it, don't forget to like the video, and if you haven't already, Subscribe, so you don't miss a single upload. The story, as commonly told, sets the scene as the 18th of December, 1944. Two days into Germany's last offensive westward, Operation Watch on the Rhine, more popularly known as the Battle of the Bulge. To the northeast of the critical crossroads town of St. Veith sits an M8 Greyhound belonging to B Troop of the 87th Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron. All is quiet, until, at 12 o'clock, the crew spot a tank approaching the American line. The tank is identified as a German Tiger I. At 57 tons, the Tiger grossly outweighs the 8-ton armoured car, and its armour is virtually impregnable against the 37mm gun of the Greyhound. Luckily, the Tiger has not spotted the M8, and soon turns north, moving parallel to the American line up towards the town of Hunigan, driving straight past the armoured car. The crew of the Greyhound seize their chance and move out of their concealed position to begin pursuing the Tiger. However, the crew of the Tiger soon spot the Greyhound and quickly begin to traverse the turret. It's a race against the clock to see who can fire first. A race the Greyhound wins. Closing to just 23 metres, the Greyhound fires three rounds rapid into the rear of the Tiger which begins to shudder, stop, and burn. It is a thrilling story of daring heroism and courage against all odds. But did it really happen that way? Did it happen at all? Let us look at what American and German sources say happened on the 18th of December. The earliest record of these events is from the same day, a morning report and record of events from E Troop of the 87th, who reported that an M8 attached to A Troop knocked out one Tiger tank. Already we can see discrepancies. E Troop credits the kill to a Greyhound of A, not B Troop. In addition, a map of the squadron's positions that day shows B Troop occupied a position running west to east, and were north of both St. Veith and Hunigan. Further discrepancies also appear in further American reports. Unlike E Troop, a Troop makes no mention of destroying a Tiger in their morning report for the 18th, nor did the squadron's CO deign to mention it in his after-action report for the month, nor did he describe it in a letter written to Major General Haxbrook in 1946, a letter specifically detailing the actions of the 87th during the Battle of St. Veith. Before I cover another version of the story, here is a brief message from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering all kinds of interesting subjects, from photography to 3D modelling, music production, and so much more. In fact, I and some of our team members are using Skillshare, and Turn is currently following a class covering Capture One by Cad Cadal, which is really helping her master editing these pictures she took in Rome. This class is full of convenient information that you can return to listening to whenever you want to and is very intuitive and easy to understand. Now personally, what makes Skillshare so special to me is that it is designed to give you an effective and pressure-free experience that'll help you learn and discover knowledge. Skillshare doesn't display any ads, does not have any additional paywalls, no bait and switches. You are free to explore absolutely everything. And if it couldn't get any better, Skillshare is running a promotion. What kind of promotion? 
Well, the first 1,000 people to use the link in our description box, or my code, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you for checking out Skillshare. Ads like these help us keep growing. And now, onto the video. Another version of the story appeared in 1947, attributed to one Captain Anstey of the 38th Armoured Infantry, who was reportedly a witness to the event. His recollection of events is roughly in line with the previous reports. However, once again, Captain Anstey also lacked documentation of his claim, and made no mention of it in a combat interview he gave only two weeks after the event supposedly occurred. Captain Anstey's report was again repeated in a book published by the US Army Armour School in 1966. This time though, the tank was identified as the Tiger II, a much larger and more formidable opponent for a Greyhound to face. So now we know the initial story, as well as the numerous tellings and retellings. What do German sources say about the event? Out of the nearly 1,500 tanks Germany fielded during the Battle of the Bulge, only 14 were Tiger 1s, and 52 were Tiger 2s. German reports report four Tiger 2s were lost on the 18th, but no Tiger 1s. Three of the Tiger 2s belonged to the 501st SS Heavy Tank Battalion, and were lost at Stavlot, Kuh, and Troy Ponts, many miles northwest of St. Vith. The 4th belonged to the 506th Heavy Tank Battalion, and was lost in the Lenzweiler Road in Luxembourg. Photographic evidence of three of the Tigers shows no penetrating hits to the rear of the vehicle, nor any burn marks that would corroborate any of the vehicles to the tank in the story. Of course, the other question we must ask is, would such an engagement between a Tiger II and a Greyhound have been possible as described? British penetration charts show that the Greyhound's 37mm gun, when firing the standard M51 armour-piercing capped round, could penetrate a maximum of 65mm of rolled homogeneous armour, angled at 30 degrees, 50% of the time. The Tiger II's rear armour was angled at 30 degrees, but was 80mm thick. It would have been virtually impossible for a Greyhound to penetrate the rear armour of the Tiger II, let alone doing so three times in succession. So if the tank wasn't a Tiger 1, and it wasn't a Tiger 2, what did the Greyhound really fight? One possibility is that the tank wasn't actually a tank, but a Sturmgeschütz 3 assault gun. The 38th Armoured Infantry and B Troop of the 87th Cavalry were attacked by the 18th Volksgrenadier Division, supported by a battalion of Stugs on the 17th and 18th of December. It is possible that, at some point during the battle, an M8 was able to sneak around behind a Stug and knock it out from the rear. How one could misidentify a Stug as a Tiger tank is another question. Perhaps the most likely explanation is that the tank was not a Tiger or a Stug, but the somewhat more ubiquitous Panzer IV. The tank was much more common than the Tiger, but with its rectangular body and rounded turret, both aspects enhanced by and spaced armour, at a distance the Panzer IV could certainly be mistaken for the much more deadly Tiger. It would certainly have been possible for a Greyhound to take out a Panzer IV from the rear, although the Panzer IVs only attacked the main line of the 87th Cavalry, and thus it is unlikely that any of B Troop would have been engaged in combat against them, although perhaps not an impossibility. Captain Anstey passed away in 2003, taken to the grave the only known eyewitness of this fabled event. The truth can sometimes be stranger than the best fictional tale, but with a corresponding lack of supporting primary evidence or documentation, it seems as if this story remains fictional, although some elements are apparently grounded in reality. What do you think? Did a daring Greyhound crew really knock out a German heavy tank? Or was the real target something less impressive? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell to make sure you don't miss a single upload. If you want to contribute more directly, consider joining us on PayPal or Patreon. It helps us keep the lights on, and our patrons can even help decide what articles get worked on next month in monthly polls. Until next time, keep us in your sights.